The InkPad X's home screen looks fantastic with the 10.3 inch screen real estate and the high resolution. You have some recent books here. It looks like a carousel. It technically isn't. It's just three pages, so it moves three at once kind of thing. That doesn't move with any inertia or anything like that, which is weird because the bottom one actually does have inertia and it slowly scrolls as you swipe around. Anyways, if we drop down from the top here, you can see we have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, front light, task manager, sync. Yes, this does have a front light, which makes it very unique because it's one of the only 10.3 inch e-readers with a front light on the market. This is not a note taking uh, Wacom e-reader. Uh, this is strictly just for reading books. You have some notifications and we'll show the light a little bit later on. At the bottom, you have library, store, and settings. And if you swipe up from the bottom, you actually get some apps. No, this is not Android, so you can't uh, log into you know, Facebook and sideload Instagram and all that kind of thing. But they are still applications, and we will touch on a couple of these moving forward. It's nice to see companies doing new things and it's always nice to see pocketbook devices because they've always been e-reading first and foremost. They don't do any note taking, although they do have something very interesting and we'll touch on that first. If you tap in the center of the screen, you do have some things on the screen that you can interact with. And if you look down here at note, if you click on note, you actually get a couple things you can do. And it actually says you can mark text with the marker. And we're just gonna close that because what that means is you can essentially scribble on EPUBs, which no other device really allows you to do. So you see you can make notes on there and it starts off a little pixelated at first and that's because it wants to give you the best latency possible because this is using just a capacitive uh, goodie reader stylus. We're not using anything Wacom or anything like that. We will show more scribbling on the full note taking experience but it is very cool how you can actually make notes and highlights on an EPUB uh, book and not having to load in a PDF version or anything like that. Everything saves right away and you can tap the center once more to keep going through everything else. So if you go down to settings, that's the one we're going to focus on mostly because this is going to be where you change all of the line spacing, the margins, and if you move over to text, this is going to change the font styles and italic bold and uh, etc. You also have this one which allows you to display status bar, pages, built-in page numbering, etc. Pocketbook also does something really interesting where you can actually pinch and zoom on an EPUB and that's very interesting because not a lot of companies actually allow you to do that. It is decent when you're moving around but then when it renders it actually triggers a zoom in of your text so it basically increases the text size rather than zooming in on a particular portion so you do get to zoom in and you th see things are, are, are cut off and then a second later it'll actually increase the text and format it properly to fit all four corners so that is very nice in and of itself you get dictionary as well so you click on dictionary and then you can start clicking on words and it says then it'll do particle comparison etc etc so uh, you can pin that you can take notes on that even further or you can just exit out of there using the little exit door right there you can long press on things as well so they do allow you to do long presses note taking uh, notes scribbles etc long pressing on something automatically gets you to the highlight notes and keyboard experience so that's all very convenient that you don't have to go to the note tab every single time Typing is very slow, I will admit that, it's extremely slow, but it doesn't miss any characters, so something you're really going to have to get used to. And yes, we are running the latest update as of December 5th, 2019. You do have three ways to change the page as well. You can tap on the side, you can swipe, and you can use the physical page turn buttons down below there. So you do have a lot of ways to actually change the uh, page. And there is page jump where you can actually press and hold the page key and then you'll see it jump by tens, 50, 60, 70, etc. down below and then when you let go it has jumped all those tens of pages that way you don't have to click through every single page to get to where you want to go. 
Scribble is probably the most interesting part about this device. Uh, not the most useful, but it is the most interesting because existing in this world of nothing but 10.3 inch note-taking devices like the Boyu, the Supernote, the Onyx, and so forth, exists this, something that isn't a note-taking device but can do very light note-taking tasks. And they go about it their own way. For example, you see it lags to a certain degree and it chops it up. And this is to increase, uh, decrease latency so that it can actually deliver you a better note-taking experience and quicker. And then once it renders, it, it, it renders and it becomes, well, see visible. And that's because they're they don't prioritize note taking so if you wanted to do it you can do it the quality is nice and it does have some functionality you get things like eraser of course this isn't Wacom so we don't have the eraser on the back or anything like that and yes this is just a simple goodie reader uh, capacitive stylus and you can use your finger all the same because these are the exact same things you do have text as well you can box a range like that you can add text I'll just say Yo, press enter, add the text, it'll add right there, and then you can actually change the text. You can change the font size, uh, the font style, you can go you know, bold, etc., and the font face, so what you know font you actually want. You have a couple other things like you can go back if you make a mistake, you can add another page, it instantly adds one, refreshes everything, and then you can cycle between the pages you made. All of that is very interesting on a non-note-taking e-reader, and it is interesting that this can do that. This is the preloaded store, Bookland. You can see prices range anywhere from, well, dollars all the way up to $45 at times, USD. So things can get very expensive. This is what your typical purchase decision will look like. You'll have your book here, ISBN, read sample, you click read sample, you read the first 7 to 10 pages, etc. You can buy and then you can go down onto the next page and read what the synopsis is right there. And you do have some categories like most popular books. Uh, you have languages as well because Pocketbook is a very internationally friendly company. You can see the mass amount of languages they offer in terms of um, uh, the books they offer on their store so it is very nice to have this uh, feature on here because a lot of devices don't have their own bookstore the glow light is no slouch either yes it's blue but that's because we have smart light and you can actually move that along and you can white balance the screen uh, companies as big as save and boy you can't really figure this out either um, that they don't have to exactly have a toggle between the blue lights or the white and the orange lights or the warm lights you can actually blend both and have them both on at the exact same time like that so it is very nice that they have this and you have automatic mode as well it goes by the time of day it doesn't have a light sensor or anything like that um, and uh, it all works very well and the distribution is quite nice although the uh, slider bars can be a little bit quicker I would say but other than that uh, the light distribution is great the web browsing experience is just okay it does give you the courtesy of isolating the 80 percent of the screen and turning it into somewhat of an a2 mode although there's no device wide uh, toggle for this and you see it does not affect the top bar so they have isolated it very well and what this allows you to do is scroll a little bit quicker and then it takes its time to render after the fact and that's okay because then you can move around like this and then once you let go you can see the image comes to fruition and it's beautiful again you do have some pinch and zoom capabilities as well and all the zooming and navigation on this device actually is pretty quick and it's a little bit night and day because when it comes to a couple other things like typing it's actually quite slow so uh, they seem to pick and choose their moments on the inkpad x so we have a bluetooth speaker here we're just gonna test the audio via the audio dongle at the bottom this compliment before so many bystanders completely won the heart of the vain and choleric frenchman ah sir you are too complacent i hope i shall have the pleasure to make your acquaintance james appel monsieur auguste so the quality of the audio is perfectly fine, and I must say the voice playback is quite nice. Um, I don't want to be uh, uh, too rude, but there are a lot of Chinese companies that will actually get someone who's 
doesn't really speak English to try to speak English on the TTS. So it comes off as someone with a very heavy uh, Chinese accent. And that's fine if you're speaking Chinese, but when you're trying to speak English on an international device with the English setting, it doesn't work that well. On the pocketbook as well, you do have add voice. So you can add different languages like Dutch, uh, American chipmunk. <laughs> I just saw that uh, American English Jennifer Kimberly Sally etc and there's British and whatnot so uh, again very international friendly company so they do allow you to uh, uh, you know run different languages like that obviously on a 10.3 inch device we have to show off uh, PDFs because PDFs are very relevant to show on these big screens because if you compare it with say a smaller device like a 7.8 you can see that it is significantly bigger offering the ability to well, read textbooks, um, newspapers, and basically read the text as is. You don't really have to pinch and zoom, although you can. So I'll just show you some images. You do have some ability to pinch and zoom. The zoom part wasn't bad. The rendering was a little bit slow. That's just the reality of working on an e-reader that is primarily meant for books. If you long press on something, you can see it does take a second, but when you do, it it is very interesting, haha, -ha, because not a lot of devices can long press on side-loaded PDFs, that's very nice, and you have the ability to draw on the PDF. But it's also uh, nice to see that, be it an EPUB or a PDF, you can draw on it regardless. And honestly, the latency isn't that bad. Uh, it does do its little, uh, you know, deconstruction, deconstructing tail thing where it just, you know, makes everything look terrible until it renders. But once it does render, it's a very high quality line and you can make your notes and scribble and, you know, uh, and do all that kind of stuff. And you have a couple of font options here, uh, line options here, and you have eraser as well. So you can do all your erasing like that. Again, not the quickest of experiences but it can do it which is actually very nice to have on this type of device the pocketbook inkpad x isn't the fastest device on the market and it's not the most capable but it is one of the best looking non-note-taking e-readers you can buy and because this is not a note-taking e-reader they're not running android they don't have any distractions and it's reading centric with a ton of different language options a ton of different language dictionaries and everything you'll need to get a proper reading experience and the big screen size on this device really makes it take it to the next level for pocketbook if you guys have any other questions comments or concerns leave them down below and for a goodie reader and a review of the inkpad x this is peter